My name is Jeff Segler, and I am the official artist of the Boy Scouts of America. I, um, besides being the national artist of the Boy Scouts of America, I am a Western artist, I paint Western scenes, and I show in galleries around Santa Fe, New Mexico, Scottsdale, Arizona, and Jackson Hole, Wyoming, primarily. Um, I was recently chosen to be a member of an exclusive club called the Salma Gundy Club on Fifth Avenue in New York City. And uh, it was formed in 1871. And uh, pretty prestigious organization. Rockwell was a, a member of that group, as were many, many. So I'm really honored to be um, included in that group. But I think I would really like to be able to tell the story of scouts on the ground and scout leaders on the ground, you know, where they, you know, those, those scenes that are so memorable um, in all of our minds uh, as events take place. And I'd really like to capture those in a natural setting. You know, artists that um, really have influenced me, um, I, I think some of the most important ones, N.C. Wyeth, first and foremost. He did uh, just iconic images of the West and America, Americana. Certainly Norman Rockwell, he, he, he was and still is a tremendous influence on my work. But there were a lot of artists in the uh, Tao School of Artists, Bloom and Shine, oh God, I don't know if I could remember everybody's name, but uh, there was a group of artists that worked out of Taos in the early to mid 1900s, and they uh, produced some gorgeous work that continues to be an influence on my style and technique. I am only the third Norman Rockwell was the first, and he started in the early 1900s and held the title for 60 years. And um, he was followed by Joseph Satari, who is still alive. And uh, Joe worked, I think, um, it's sort of as an intermediary between Rockwell and the BSA in later years, I know Joe was, I think, a director, design director, whatever, of Boy's Life magazine for a long time. But he was the one who got to interact with Norman and uh, work out painting concepts and ideas. And then following, at the later years of Joe's tenure, I know his son Jeff Satari, who I have had the privilege to talk to lately, was involved in the interaction between the Boy Scouts and Joe in developing concepts and coming up with workable ideas that became paintings. You know, it's just uh, the title of the Boy Scouts of America National Artist is an incredible honor. I started out in Scouts, went through my arrow of light as a little kid. I earned my Eagle Scout Award and went on to then be a Scoutmaster and then work at Fomont uh, for many years. And w when I first came on board at Fomont, I was working on a Scout painting. <laughs> and I don't know what I was thinking, but I, I brought this unfinished painting with me of a Scout hiking, backpack, heavy backpack. Um, and 
I was working in the trail equipment office here in base camp at Philmont, and I set my easel up behind me. While there was a lot of dead time, I worked on this painting, and, and I had no idea what it would you know, ultimately lead to. And um, in 1979, 80-ish, Dave Bates, who was associate director of program at Philmont, I think at the time, asked, no, no, actually, I take that back. He was working out of the national office at that time. He did both. But anyway, he came back to me and we were friends. He said, you know, the, we're looking for an artist to do the cover of the Boy Scout Field Guide. And in 1980, that cover, that book came out, and my artwork was on the cover. And the 1980 edition of the Boy Scout Field Guide, I think was in publication for 20 years until about the year 2000. And, uh, and that was an incredible honor at the time. Certainly an incredible honor for a young guy. And, um, and now, to be the national artist of the Boy Scouts of America is the highest honor. And I take it very seriously and I hope to produce images that are meaningful and that scouts and scouters love. In about 79, 1979 or 1980, I was on staff at Philmont. I was a camp director and um, just enthralled with Philmont, loved it. And I came up with this idea of a painting called I Want to Go Back to Philmont. And it was sort of an iconic image that was meant to represent that anticipation, those feelings that every staff member has after it, it, preceding every summer, um, waiting for that brown envelope that would come in the mail sometime in the spring and uh, dreaming about Felmont for the next upcoming year and maybe remembering Felmont over the past seasons. And, um, and so I painted this painting of that concept and I presented it to Felmont, to Lloyd Knudsen, who was the director of program that year and um, just wanted it to be a special gift from me sort of paying back a little bit uh, of everything that Philmont had done for me and meant to me. And I didn't know it was gonna be so popular, but uh, Lloyd Knudsen took it seriously and uh, he made a huge presentation at the opening staff banquet, I think it was maybe 1981. And uh, we did, at Philmont's request, uh, a number of signed and numbered lithographs of the image. And, um, it, you know, it was well received. And so my goal was accomplished and um, it's still around. So in about, uh, I was camp director at Poneal in 1980. And um, there was an advisor that continually brought uh, contingents from Pennsylvania. Litzy was his nickname. And he had bad knees, arthritis in his knees, and could no longer go on the trail. And so logistics called me up on the radio one afternoon and said, you know, this guy 
needs something to do. And his crew's on the trail. He's going to be here for 12 days or whatever. And could we send him up to you? And, you know, you kind of wonder what you're getting yourself into when you say, when you agree to those kind of things. But they sent Litzy up. Uh, Bill Litzenberger, that was his name. And uh, they sent him up to Pony Hill. And man, what a joy. He was fun, funny, just a ham in front of the camera. Loved to make fun of the boys, and uh, they loved it. And so during his stay, I, I got thinking about him, and I had this idea of a stagecoach writer. And I talked to him, we agreed to do the photo shoot. This stagecoach behind me was under the portal at Rayado at the time. Kind of derelict, wasn't well taken care of, but at least it was protected under the uh, portal. And so they pulled it out for me into the sun. And uh, let's see, in all of his arthritic knees, and they were really bad, and he was quite a heavy guy, um, struggled, got up onto the stagecoach, and proceeded to do a classic N.C. Wyatt slash Norman Rockwell kind of scene for me of a stagecoach driver. And um, I had another friend, Todd Conklin, who was going to be sitting in the shotgun seat, uh, but Todd couldn't get away. So in the end, I painted carved initials of Todd Eugene Conklin, TEC, in the side of the wooden panel. So when I come back and look at this stagecoach or this mud wagon, whatever they call it, um, I am extremely familiar with the grain of the wood, the paint drips that are on the side of the thing, uh, because I painted all of those, the bolts, everything. And um, it was, it still is to this day one of my most popular paintings. You know, um, I have been painting and drawing since, God, the first days I remember were third grade. And uh, my art teacher would put all of my work in the presentation windows in the hallways and stuff. I was famous for my nudes back in third grade. Um, I don't know why, but anyway. Um, i just been doing, doing this. It's what I do. Um, I thought when I got to college, you know, certainly art was something I thought about studying, but I really wanted to be a forester, wildlife biologist, and I started down that path. But in the end, I got my undergraduate degree in fine art, painting, and uh, communication arts, graphic design. And I took one painting course in that entire program, one semester. Everything since, um, either I have done studies on my own independently or taken workshops or just stood in galleries in front of original paintings and figured out to the best of my ability how I could paint that way. You know, I don't know if I remember the first time I was published. I've been in numerous magazine articles, feature articles. Um, I think maybe some of the earliest uh, publicity I received was from the 1980 Boy Scout field guide, field book. 
And um, I, you know, I got local representation from the papers in Cimarron when I was painting here, and I was on staff. But I don't know, the most significant, I don't know. I don't know, it's just been continual publicity. Um, I started out when, when I was finishing up my tenure as a camp director at Philmont. It was back in 1981. I, no, 83. I was able to get a contract to produce the first Philmont field guide. It was funded by like Tandy Corporation and I don't know, maybe Phillips Petroleum, I think. But uh, they gave us money to produce this first field guide and that was my first project leaving Philmont and it brought me back for the next two and a half, three years um, doing all the research. I had great writers, Dan and Mary Stuver. I had photographers on my team, Mick Greenbank in particular. And you know, it was it was it was a good product. It was a good product. Then we followed that up. Um, I did the I think it was the fiftieth anniversary sort of coffee table historical book, hardback book on Philmont, and that came out in the late 1980s. So I, you know, through the 80s, I had done a number of publications for the Boy Scouts. Since then, you know, I just do a lot of brochures, posters, graphics, pro bono kind of work to promote events. I've done things for the Villa Fulmonte, um, a CD publication, do work for the Philmont Staff Association and their annual reports. Um, but, you know, that kind of thing. I, I just, since the 1980s, since those official publications, doing a lot of just supportive work for different aspects of Philmont and the Boy Scouts. Um, if, if anyone's interested, uh, you can access my work through primarily through my website www.jwsegler.com my email phone number all that information is available on the website and um, that's how you'll get a hold of me Philmont um, like so many changed my life changed the lives of many. Um, I describe it as literally my life turned a corner. And uh, scouting has been a very important part of my life from the time I was 11 through scouting, Eagle Scout, Philmont, publications for the BSA, and now this tremendous honor of being the national artist for the Boy Scouts of America. And, you know, I am still the, one of the scout leaders in a troop in Los Alamos, New Mexico, Troop 22. This is its 100th anniversary this year, first mounted troop in all of BSA. And, uh, you know, it continues through my life, um, I just passed my 50 year mark as a, as a scouter, scout and scouter, and um, I'm going. My son is working on his eagle, and you know, I don't, I don't see much end in sight. It's, scouting is very, very much part of my life and will be for years to come.